community has played a vital role in my journey. Uh, it has changed me from being an introvert person to a public speaker. It has changed me from being only a team player to a leader. And it has really, I have been uh, really fascinated with product management here. Uh, though my, I have, I'm pursuing my degree into master's in computer science, but product management is the thing that really to build your personal brand, uh, build your personal identity. That is so a lot of things are there to learn from hackathons. Yeah, surely your insights were incredible because someone who may not know what hackathons are, they really got a like, big insight in it. So um, yeah, that's that's a great answer because it is nice to hear that people are actually taking initiatives to go and contribute to communities and actually know more about it and network. Welcome to another episode of IEEE Pony Sections Beyond Conversation. I'm your host Sanjana and today we have the privilege of sitting down with someone whose work truly captures the essence of curiosity, leadership and community. Meet Mrunang Pawar, a visionary in the tech world committed to innovation and collaboration. As the founder of Tech Brewers Club, Mrunang has built a vibrant community in India that brings technologists together to share ideas and push the boundaries of what's possible. Currently, he is pursuing his master's in computer science at Santa Clara University in USA. His journey as software developer and along with his deep interest in product management highlights his versatile approach to the tech industry. In this episode, we'll explore his passion for technology, his leadership philosophy, his dedication to community building and his vision for the future of product management. So whether you are an aspiring technologist, a seasoned professional or simply curious about the stories behind tomorrow's leaders, sit back, relax and join us as we journey through the inspiring life of Pranang Pawar. Hello Pranang. Pranang, um, on Hi. behalf of Beyond Conversation podcast team at IEEE Pune section, it's with great pleasure that we extend a warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining in. Um, can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Uh, thanks a lot for the invite, firstly. And I'm Ronan Pawar, currently pursuing my master's degree in computer science from Santa Clara University. I'm a founder and lead at Club Tech Brewers. Yeah. Also, I've been uh, MLS Top 50 Hackers for 2023. And also recently, I got selected as a GitHub Campus Expert. So, I've been involved mostly into hackathons and community. So, that kind of person I am. So yeah, this was pretty much of my introduction. It was a great introduction. So let's dive right into the question. So first question is, mm-hmm. your undergraduate years seemed packed with various extracurricular activities. Could you share some key mm-hmm. moments or experiences from that time, you know, significantly influenced sure. your journey? Sure. So uh, like uh, I started my undergrad uh, in 2019. And uh, in 2020, yeah, we know it was a lockdown and we were all at home. So uh, during that time, I stumbled upon a few of the initiatives that were likely into the technical industry. Yep. Uh, for example, uh, Hacktable Fest, which is one of the open source festivals that is uh, happening in the month of October. And I had an opportunity to participate in Hacktable Fest. And I bought that awesome t-shirt that uh, really influenced my journey to get involved into all these uh, open source activities. So it was just kind of motivation for me. And I started looking up for more opportunities where I can just uh, involve into those communities, be a part of those hackathons and get in more inv- uh, valuable knowledge, connect with other peers. Yeah. And so I started my journey into my joining some of the developer communities and uh, later then I just uh, thought of starting my own community uh, which is Tech Brewers that uh, that is around 1900 members globally right now we have people from different countries and uh, I just started that community for the sake of helping other students and people to know about these opportunities that that I had got to connect with because in college, we, uh, we all know that it's like we just go to college, we do the curricular work and then come back from, uh, come back to home. But it's really important to understand what's happening to the industry and uh, being able to participate into hackathons, being part of communities. Because it really bridges the gap between the academy and the industry. Yeah. And that's the reason communities really play a vital role. 
and that's how i just started getting involved into communities in 2020 i uh, attended my first hackathon in 2021 and after that i have been part of over 20 to 25 hackathons with different roles like hacker mentor speaker yeah. judge so it really helps a lot and these were the extracurricular activities i did during my undergrad yeah so you know extending that question as well what do you think uh, hacktober fest is can you just explain something about it mm-hmm. to our audience who may not be aware of it sure yeah, so uh, uh hacktober fest is an uh, open source festival kind of thing where we uh, try to celebrate the open source kind of pro- open source projects uh, so there are uh, if you can go to hacktoberfest.com you can just check out uh, what hacktoberfest is actually and mostly the pro- uh, program is like you have different projects of, uh, on github which have the hacktoberfest tag over it and people just go and contribute create pull requests to it and if you get four pull requests merged then you officially complete the hacktoberfest program and previously you were able to get a t-shirt but right because of some reasons like people were just uh, pushing some spam pull request just to get that t-shirt and that's the reason Hacktoberfest decided that okay we'll not be giving t-shirts but you can plant a tree uh, just towards to show some like uh, gratitude towards, towards the yeah. nature yeah and that's the reason so Hacktoberfest is basically open source festival you can say where people get more active on GitHub, creating more open source contributions, being active, creating pull requests. So it's the best time, like you can learn open source anytime during the year, but it's the best time to learn Git and GitHub, how to create a pull request, how should a repository actually have a good kind of documentation. So it's good time to like uh, nourish your repositories create cool uh, do- like mom, uh, read me's so people learn a lot during this phase so this is all about hacktober phase yeah so as you said like club tech brewers that you have been founded and mm-hmm. now leading also so what are what all domains do you think are there in club tech brewers uh, so uh, as a part of tech brewers we initially started it uh, with the aim of helping people to learn connect and build yeah and it was just a central community where we hosted different events but later on we found out that people have different areas of interest like few people were specifically interested into app development yeah few of them were specifically interested into web development so we thought of like whatsapp just launched their community feature and we were able to sectorize all those different domains yeah. into different groups so then we started with web development, app development. Now we have cloud computing, AML, AR, VR. Then we have events and opportunities channel as well, where people just uh, post the, the new events that are happening around their region, different opportunities that have uh, that we have. Uh, also, we have a networking channel where people share their LinkedIn posts, Twitter posts, so that they can get reached. People can read out their blog posts. So uh, through events and opportunities channel, we are glad that few people were able to land internships as well wow. uh, because of the referral yeah. that a uh, few of our members posted. So uh, we were able to create that impact. Also, we, uh, recently we started the product management domain as well under Tech Brewers. So we are still trying to come up with different, uh, more different domains. Most probably we'll be adding UI UX domain as well into the group so yeah that's a really These are the different domains. initiative um and really because mm-hmm. i have seen the post about product management as well as someone who is actually interested in that field so you have been involved in organizing and leading multiple tech communities and events such as like tech tech viewers at, and now you are like community manager of gdsc silicon valley right so can you tell something about yeah, your experience uh, towards it sure so uh like I joined uh, JDG Silicon Valley as a community manager recently. It's uh, just one month, I guess. And recently we had an event, uh, JDG Build with AI, uh, which was hosted at Sunnyvale's Google campus. And it was pretty much of a different experience because uh, 
it being uh, in the silicon valley we were able to uh, meet people whom we usually watched over our youtube or television yeah. uh, they were delivering keynotes and to witness those people in front of our eyes it's really a different experience seeing those people interact seeing those people communicate delivering talks delivering workshops it's really a next level thing that i believe uh, so as a community manager i like being a community person it's really uh, the experience of people that matter the most to me because every time whenever it's either club tech brewers or other communities that i have been part of like mongodb user group pune or pune force or it may be jd in silicon valley my always focus is on delivering better experience to the audience because they take that time of their life uh, mostly weekends to attend those events and it's our responsibility to deliver the best possible experience to those people so that is uh, how it is and speaking about my experience as a community manager at jd silicon valley it's been super smooth uh, because of the organizer is pretty uh, she managed pretty well she told me that she guided me pretty well that okay these are the things that needs to be done because having a good lead is also one of the most important factors when you join a team yeah and that i believe was a crucial or important thing for me yeah truly truly because uh, if you have a good leader you know you are in right place and you can do your work yeah so how and you be your, your you are also leader of tech brewer so you might know that how leadership is a yeah. great initiative and also comes with great responsibility mm-hmm. so how what has this yeah. experience shaped your perspective on community building and leadership in tech communities so uh, the tech brewers yeah uh, tech brewers kind of okay so uh, to be honest uh, i was an introvert uh, in my school days in my early college days but uh, so my journey into public speaking started when i uh, got selected as a google crowd source influencer back in 2020 uh, and i delivered my first talk over google meet so it was around 30 people who joined the google meet and i stumbled a lot i was uh, like wasn't able to speak clearly uh, i made a lot of mistakes i wasn't able to do eye contact uh i wasn't able to figure out which words to speak but later on uh, as i started delivering more and more talks over days over months over years i got that confidence that okay i can speak in front of people but it was again a major change when it changed from virtual stage to in person events yeah. and i was not able to like we know we uh, it's difficult to speak in front of hundreds and 200 of people so i started delivering talks for uh, first few of my talks were okayish but uh, later on i start i got comfortable with that and then recently i was a speaker at developers week uh, which was in san francisco and it is world's largest developer conference so big people were attending that conference and i was able to deliver a great talk there and it was really very uh, different experience so the community building part is like it's it doesn't change you as a leader but it also changes you as a person because everything changes uh, you have you don't have any option you have to speak up to people just in a case you want to grow your community because if you don't reach out to people no one would be able to join your community and that is how the uh, community building really teaches you a lot of things uh, i am able to like uh, come up with different initiatives i am able to select a particular team i am able to understand people's uh, like likings okay a certain particular person is interested into web development they are expecting more of a content about web development so understanding those uh, members then delivering that kind of experience to all those people so a lot of things come into the uh, picture when we think of leadership and leading a community because handling a community of over 1900 members yeah. is not a task i believe 
so yeah a lot of things come into the scene and i'm confident that i'm able to deliver something uh like something uh really capable of or something important to the people and even if it changes uh even a one person's life it's really very great thing for me and my team yeah that's that's a really great answer um transitioning to next question being recognized as as you said mlh top 50 hackers in 2023 is mm-hmm. a really great and remarkable achievement so could you tell us about your journey mm-hmm. into your hackathons and impact they had on your personal and professional life sure so uh i start as i mentioned earlier as well i participated in my first hackathon in 2021 yep. which was winter hack olympics i participated into it with one of my friends uh he was one uh, he's one of my childhood friends and we were just curious about what hackathons are because when the word hackathons come into our mind we think that it's related to something uh, ethical hacking yeah. or we'll be hacking some machines yes. and that was my kind of perspective as well earlier back those days and then uh, when i participated in that hackathon so our sole aim was to understand what hackathons are how are those and that's the reason we just uh, thought like let's participate we have nothing to lose and that's how we registered for the hackathon and it started so hackathons are basically like uh, there are different kinds of hackathons few of those are 36 hours few of those are 48 hour hackathons and few of those are big long month long hackathons so the hackathon we participated in was a 36 hour hackathon and uh we had to solve some problem but we both were uh, it was our first time we were participating into an hackathon and that's the reason we just uh, thought that we have to make some submission and that's the reason we just developed a simple website related to uh olympics because uh, the title of the hackathon was winter hack olympics okay and that's the reason we just collected some sports we just uh, put it on a website and if i see at uh, at this moment if i see at that website i feel like what is the project that we had created and what kind of projects other people had created but uh, to be honest that was a great experience and we understood that it's not about the project that you build during the hackathon it's all about what you learn uh, there are different things that you get to learn from hackathons uh, firstly uh, the most important thing is the uh, time management the another thing is networking that you do the third thing is different skills that you learn within that uh, stipulated time frame because you just have 36 hours you have to build the website you have to deploy it you have to maintain your github repository as well because uh, during the submission you have to submit your github repo and you have to prepare the entire documentation and all this stuff yeah. also you have to make sure that uh because most of the hackathon submissions are on dev post you have to prepare the proper submission post as well you have to record a demo video post it over youtube then upload that link as well so a lot of things come into picture and this is how you learn about time management a few times when i participated uh, in other hackathons with some of my friends we faced this issue that uh we are yet to shoot the demo video and uh, hackathon deadline is in 15 minutes so we learned in a very uh, cruel way that how time management how crucial time management is and recently uh, me along with my friends in santa clara university we participated at stanford xr hackathon so it's a big university stanford we all know we have dreamt of stanford and attending a in person hackathon at that university is a next level experience so given the expertise into these other things we know that uh, how hackathons run so my uh, advice would be that start participating into hackathons no matter where you are in your tech journey whether you are just starting or whether you are a experienced developer attending hackathons really is different than what we could because of the stipulated time frame because of a specific problem statement that you have to build a solution over so a lot of different things are there to experience as compared to normal coding that we do 
so uh, plus you get to see how other people approach the same problem statement yeah you get to know their about their vision uh, what they think about what they think about it how they try to solve that particular problem from a different way so a lot of things come into the picture and of course you get to learn a lot of new skills uh, during hackathon because it's not like uh, your tech stack will always work you might have to change the tech stack because you have a uh, certain time frame and you need to develop fast so you may use different libraries different frameworks to get that uh, dev- speed in the development so a lot of things are there to learn from hackathons yeah surely your insights were incredible because someone who may not know what hackathons are they really got mm-hmm. a big insight in it so um mm-hmm. as i was seeing your profile there was also the experience as a spark ar expert trainer and mm-hmm. contributor to girl script summer of code and you have played a mm-hmm. role in educating and mentoring these technologists so what motivates you mm-hmm. to give back to the community as we know that you said that girl script summer of code and hackwafs this is all about open source So what is mm-hmm. your perspective in, on that and what advice would you like to give for someone who is looking into contributing into it uh, So uh Girl Script Summer of Code is uh one of the good programs to start open source into because you have more projects in Girl Script Summer of Code yeah. and you can consider it as a you know, consider it as a stepping stone uh, you can get the gist of it once you are uh, comfortable with contributing to open source projects you have different open source programs that you can target to there is google summer of code gsoc which is one yeah. of the prestigious open source programs and to be a part of it it really takes a lot of efforts uh, i have a few friends who were part of gsoc and it's really difficult to get into gsoc and that's the reason uh, like you can start with girl script summer of code because without any open source experience you can't really jump like i can i won't say you can't you can but uh, it really it's it's a good practice that you try practicing your open source skills yeah. you can try contributing to different code bases so that it will be easier for you to understand those uh, projects that are participating in gsoc to understand the large code bases that uh, what the code is actually doing and all the stuff so uh it's really uh important to get into hacktober phase uh, well script summer of code there are different programs other open source programs as well so take a look at it just like there's you don't have to pay anything to be a part yeah. of those programs so feel free to it just request some of your time and passion to contribute to open source and use your knowledge of technology skills to contribute to other code and also uh, turning back to your question on uh, spark air campus and yeah. said a thing where you mentioned what motivates me to give back to the community so uh, community has played a vital role in my journey uh, it has changed me from being an introvert person to a public speaker it has changed me from being only a team player to a leader and it has really changed me a lot in terms of uh knowledge in uh knowledge into technology in terms of other uh, interpersonal skills as well and that's the reason i want to give back to the community because in my first year of undergrad i wasn't i really wasn't aware of all these things that are happening into the technological industry and i believe there are few people who are really struggling right now as well in terms of awareness about these programs awareness about hackathons awareness about communities because they aren't aware of these different things that are happening into the world and it's really important to spread awareness uh, reach out to those people that okay these are the things that you should actively participate into and get them on board and that's what i am trying to do through take brewers that getting uh, reaching out to those people and helping them uh, get started into technology and as a spark air campus ambassador or expert trainer i started uh, spark air is basically a tool that meta has built okay uh, which helps you develop social air experiences for uh, instagram and facebook uh, the filters that we use yeah. basically uh, 
those are on Snapchat as well. So developing those fi- uh, filters, uh, it's about all about Spark AR. And I was expert trainer there. Uh, I taught Spark AR to about, I guess, 500 to 700 plus students. I also had a chance of organizing a hackathon, a uh, hack with AR, which uh, noticed about 700 plus submissions for that hack for that hackathon. And it was, of course, sponsored by Meta. So it was a really big, huge opportunity for me, as well as for the students to get involved into AR, because this uh, because the evolution that Meta and other companies are doing into Metaverse is really commendable. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's actually great. I did not know that it was about Meta, mm-hmm. the initiative, but it was mm-hmm. great to know. Yeah, so um, pra- technically, when did you begin your um, preparations as GRE or TOEFL? Any standardized test? Mm-hmm. When was the time frame? What was it? How did you stumble upon it and did it? So, uh, I started my preparations one year back when I was supposed to get an admit or land into the US. So, uh, I was uh, targeting for fall 23. Yeah. Uh, like getting admitted into fall 23. So I started my uh, GRE preparations and all in May to May or June of 2022. And I gave uh, my exams in uh, August, September t- uh, time frame. Then I gave my TOEFL uh, during that period and submitted my applications in November, December and January. I got my admits into... Uh, I, sta- I started getting admits from month of April, I guess. Oh, sorry, uh, from month of February. Uh, February, March, April. These were the three months when I started getting admits. Then getting all those documents like I-20 and do all those other stuff from the universities. And then preparing for the visa interviews and then landing to the US. So this was a general specific time frame. For oh, me. it's it's a great. Um, could you like share some of your challenges you face during your master's program right now you're doing, and how did you like uh, overcome them? Uh, so uh, currently studying yeah. masters, uh, haven't completed yet, but uh, yeah, uh, there are a lot of challenges you face when you land into the US. Because it's not easy task to manage all the things on uh, yourself and focus on studies as well. So there are a lot of things that you have to take care of. Uh, because being a student, uh, there is really a huge difference between Indian education system and education system here. In India, we have this uh, habit of like, uh, we have our exams on particular dates, yeah. uh, like not on particular dates, but we have final exam itself and it has the 100% weightage. Yes. But education system here is different. We have midterms, we have finals, we have weightage for assignments, we have weightage for uh, attentiveness in your class, we have weightage for attendance. So there are different things that uh, come into play when you are studying in the US and we have to take care of all those things. So it's a different thing as because we are really very uh, uh, like suitable with the Indian education oh. system and it re- when it you are, when you really transition into the US education system, it it's kind of a shock that you have to face and you have to overcome it. Like uh, for me, I usually practice time management skills so that I can better schedule my work better uh, submit all my assignments before the deadline and all the stuff so yeah this this was one of the major challenges that I faced during my like team yeah debate. adapting to the US yeah. education system it's true because <laughs> we are very accustomed to being spoon fed here because you okay you had this exam yeah. here then you have to submit this project this is the format but there you have to think, you have to give space to think what all assignments are there and how you can do it mm-hmm. effectively. Yeah. So um, what are the domains that interest you over there? Like, yes, you are doing master's in computer science, but there may be some few subjects mm-hmm. that have interested you. And, you know, further you are targeting in that domains for internships and job opportunities. Uh, so uh, I have been uh, really fascinated with product management here. 
though my i have i'm pursuing my degree into masters in computer science but product management is the thing that really fascinates me uh, simply given reasons about like uh, i have had an opportunity of leading a product uh, that me and my friend built from scratch to launch and uh, it really fascinates me because i have that uh, thing in my mind always that how i can solve a prob- real world problem and use my technical skills to provide a solution based on that to solve that real world issue and uh, i believe that product management is a uh, like suits all the uh, all those uh, kind of things uh, pretty well and this is one of the domains that i am really looking forward to get internship or job opportunities into and also i am pretty enthusiastic about generative ai with the pace it has been growing and i have been building projects around gen ai as well like the blog generator or some other mini projects you can say but yeah it's really fun to play with gen ai it's really moving a lot fast yeah. as compared to other technologies that have ever arrived or ever uh, came into existence a lot of things happening into silicon valley and staying here it's really very important to uh, get acquainted with the pace of the technology uh, everything is changing each and every day each and every hour things are changing so gen ai is also one of the things that i am really interested in Yeah about the projects that you mentioned right now in product and gen ai can you give us a brief about mm-hmm. those projects it may be in mini projects but you know it will be helpful mm-hmm. uh, so uh, like uh, the blog generator thing uh, i built that project simply for the reason because i was writing blogs uh, during that time and it really because i have that uh, everyone in this uh into this world has the habit of going to chat the yes. uh, typing in the prompt okay so uh, i wanted to build something that can give me a blog in my kind of sense so i have the habit of writing a blog which can give you me an uh simple but it will be easy to understand for other people new people who are just exploring that technology and that's the reason i because when you build your own website or you build your own gen ai app you have the uh, you can explore the skill of prompt engineering and you can input it as that way in that way so okay uh, so for the project that i built i had option i had give an option for the person to select whether this blog is being written for a researcher for a normal person or for a student so in that way it really gave me a output that okay this blog is mostly targeted to researcher so please use uh, all the uh, words and all the context with respect to that will be helpful for a researcher but if it's for a normal person who is reading out the blog then it should have an easy lang- easy to understand language so this is what i built and it really helped me a lot while writing my blogs as well in the future and speaking about the other project so it was basically a product alert assistance system that we built because in daily lives we face this issue of uh, getting alerts uh, about the product expiry uh, so we basically i will just give you an overview without spending more time into that uh, we mostly developed this project uh, focusing on the healthcare and sustainability issue because these are the real world issues healthcare because it is one of the crucial things if you have poor health then nothing is of uh, nothing is of any point and other being sustainability so we have been creating a lot of garbage nowadays and it's really important to reduce that a lot of health issues are uh, getting occurred because of sustainability kind of thing, because of the garbage kind of thing and that is the reason we thought of solving these two problems and coming up with a solution that will try to solve these uh, two real world issues so that was what we tried to solve yeah these these products are great for beginners even for people mm-hmm. who are into that field and want to explore it further more so um as you mm-hmm. said that time management has been crucial part of your life right now 
how do you like manage or balance academic commitments of yours with extracurricular activities and community management mm-hmm. like they can be demanding at times how did you manage your time effectively during this program and what tra- strategies did you find most helpful so uh, i have this habit of uh, blocking my calendar uh if a lot of you have been following few people on youtube you can you might have seen those videos where they block their calendars yeah. and have everything on their calendar that uh, okay i have this thing coming up and they put it on their calendar so i have my assignment deadlines on my google calendar i have my event commitments on my google calendar so it's really difficult because uh, most of the degree students in india uh, my other my part of my team is back in yeah. india so it's really difficult to manage those time zones last week we had uh, a speaker from germany so we had to manage three time zones it was india us yeah. and germany so at some time ta- at some point of time you can't really uh, help out but it's really crucial to handle all those tasks because leading a community uh, i have got a lot of things from community and it's my responsibility to deliver the best to the community and that's the reason we have to make some choices so uh speaking about uh, time management i usually try to uh because community management really gives me uh, fun it uh, gives me joy to work up for the community so in my free time i mostly try to contribute to community uh, it can be anything uh, i really start with a lot of initiatives when i'm working for community because i like to dedicate my entire time to that uh, point of section because if i'm doing something then i will do it dedicatedly otherwise i w- simply won't so I tried different initiatives like uh, we recently started with a uh, Tech Bros monthly newsletter then uh, re- uh, we are also working on revamping Tech Bros website so doing those tasks in my free time when I get a uh, board of studies or I feel that I need some relaxation kind of thing at those times I just uh, go on and lo- uh, think about what we can do to provide more better experience to the community members so that is how i try to manage my time yeah that's that's a great answer because it is nice to hear that people are actually taking initiatives to go and contribute to communities and actually know more mm-hmm. about it than network so beyond that um collaborating with peers and professor in india and U- usa so what is one main difference that you saw or one common point between teachers in U- usa as well as in india it is integral part of success to actually collaborate with teachers mm-hmm. and begin this teamwork so can you share an experience where teamwork played a crucial role yeah so uh, it's really important to have a strong team or to have a good team and uh, firstly i will just uh, like cover the thing that you mentioned that collaborating with uh, professors and yeah. teachers so professors and teachers here are really very uh, easy to approach they welcome you they don't yeah. uh, mock you based on the question that you ask sometimes it happens that it's a silly question because uh, it's possible that you don't have a basic understanding of that subject and you go to the professor and ask that and unable to understand what you asked or the topic that you explained and they are more than happy to explain it to you from scratch they don't mock you plus uh the education here is like they dig uh, they dig dive into uh why the why are we trying to learn this yeah. whereas uh, uh back in india yeah. we try to learn how it's being uh, how we are going to use it what are the reasons yes. uh, that we Vacations are trying to use and, and yeah uh, but in here they just try to explain the entire history why it was innovative uh, invented itself and how you can apply so it's most of, more of a practical kind of approach and speaking about the team collaboration uh, most of the uh, projects or assignment um, not assignments but most of the projects here for most of the subjects you have to do group projects and it's really uh, mandatory that you at least need a group of two 
so in india we have uh, industrial projects yeah. whereas here we have to compulsorily create a project or two uh, create a group of two and submit that project so uh, as it's compulsory you have to create a group so people try to approach you you try to approach other people uh, explaining your idea that okay this is my idea what would you suggest and that is how you form groups you uh, go through the, for the entire quarter or for the entire semester you work together you deliver that project you have presentations you have reports and all the stuff to be done so that is how teamwork and uh, connection with professors works um uh, yes it's true because teamwork is necessary to know each other's perspective on mm-hmm. what the idea is and how we will go on about it beyond these all technical skills what soft skills or qualities do you believe are essential for people who are you know trying to go to usa or any other country for that matter you know to how mm-hmm. you have worked on developing uh, them throughout your master's journey uh, sure so uh, like uh, some of these soft skills like uh, you might have seen in various sort of videos as well that only having coding skills yeah, no. would not help you but uh, it's essential to have soft skills so uh, soft skills like uh, speaking out mostly uh, specifically in the us it's like if you ask you will get it yeah. if you just keep it to yourself no one would come and help you out uh, if you ask people are more than happy to help but you for that you need to ask so speaking up to people then asking for help it's uh, really necessary sometimes uh, ego comes into our mind that okay i don't uh, why should i reach out to that person and ask because here we have uh, we are people with different ages because it's a masters program not everyone is of same yeah. age uh, we have people who have 5 years of experience 6 years of experience whereas we have people like me who have just graduated and came for masters so their experience really helps a lot to understand that uh, because they have seen how uh, how it works in the industry yeah. and they have more experience than us and it really helps sometimes sometimes even those people try to seek help from uh, beginners like us to understand that okay what are the te- technologies and also it's mostly a combination of different people and so speaking uh, is one of the important soft skills that i believe you should have then leadership is like not important but it's good that uh, if you have leadership in such way it helps because you should be accountable for some things and being a leader is itself it takes a lot of experience to being a proper leader because you just, you can be a leader of a group as well for a group project it's a group of four and you are leading that project you are a leader because it takes a lot of uh, efforts and skills to manage a team of four who have different views different opinions to manage all those four people and bringing them on the same page so a leadership is also one of the important soft skills that i can yeah. uh, mostly touch upon so as we wrap there is this final question that i would like to ask what advice mm-hmm. would you give to students or professionals looking to carve their path in tech industry and especially in computer science and software development and mm-hmm. product management what is that one general advice you would like to give uh one general advice i would like to give is try to be active uh try to build your personal brand uh like just forget everything try to build your personal brand uh, build your personal identity that is most important because if people are able to notice you uh, they will surely reach out to you for different opportunities for different things so try to build your personal brand and identity uh, people should know by your name by your face that okay this person is into web development this person is xyz or all the things that should be associated with your name your face and your identity so you can do that by joining communities uh, being active over social media learning in public sharing in uh, sharing what you are building in public yeah. so that is one of the crucial things that you should focus on 
Yeah, that that's a very great advice to individuals and even someone who is in third year right now, as I am, and other people. As we wrap mm-hmm. this insightful conversation with you, we are very left with inspired and passion for all the dedication you have right now showed us. And thank you so much for sharing your experiences and perspective with us today and to our listeners. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so. Much. Thank you so much for the invite. It was really nice. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on this episode. If you found this conversation inspiring, be sure to subscribe, share and leave a review. Your support helps us reach more people with these impactful stories. Don't forget to follow us for more episodes as we continue to explore the journeys of those who are shaping the future of technology. And if you enjoyed this episode, share it with your friends who might find it valuable. Stay inspired, stay connected and keep pushing the boundaries.